Good morning, folks. My name is Alan Mercurio, and thanks for joining us this morning. Um, we're going to get our webinar started here uh, right now, actually, uh, um, coming live from our office here in Louisville, Kentucky. We've got quite a few people online with us today, and I uh, appreciate y'all joining us from all over the place. And uh, uh, we are, as I said, live. We're going to take some questions at the end. If you'd like to raise your hand during the, the process of, of the webinar, uh, you can go to the, I think it's on the right hand side of your screen, uh, type in your question and it'll uh, show up here that if we have any questions during the, the webinar, I'll try to answer those at the end if we have time. We should take about, um, I don't know, so 30 minutes or so this morning and uh, hopefully be able to give you all some good content to think about uh, understanding market corrections. And really what the process today is going to be about is a couple of questions. Uh, the first question I'm going to pose to you guys is, what would you do if the market suddenly fell by 50%? And that, that usually drives a lot of fear. We all experienced that back in 2008, just a, a short 10 years ago. Actually, we just celebrated that anniversary here not too long ago in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so the, um, actually, I take it back. It's actually coming up this coming weekend as when we're celebrating that 10 year anniversary of the 2008 downturn. A better question though, for you to think about this morning is, how would it affect your income if the market dropped suddenly by 10, 20, 30 or 40%? Uh, and that's, that's really what I want you to think about as we're going through the uh, presentation this morning. Uh, the idea behind this um, webinar is really to get you prepared for the possibility of this happening. Uh, I'm, please understand, I'm not predicting, I'm not suggesting that we're in a situation where this could actually happen. But I do want you to think about some things as we go through the notes here today uh, about how long it's been since we've had it. And history does have a, uh, a habit of repeating itself. So those are the things that we want to make sure that you're at least aware of. And again, the, pres the purpose of the today's presentation is to make sure that everybody's just uh, prepared for that, uh, that you understand what it could do to your income, what it could do to your lifestyle if, if something happened. And you may be saying, well, it wouldn't change my lifestyle at all. And that's great if it doesn't. Uh, but we want to, again, make sure you're ready if that were to happen. Uh, so again, thank you for joining us uh, and allowing me to present our, what I think is a pretty powerful presentation called Understanding Market Corrections. Uh, first of all, I'm going to read a little disclaimer here this morning. Um, so that the, you all understand where we come from, the information and opinions contained herein are for general information only. It shall not constitute an offer to sell or solicit any offer to buy a security or an investment. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet a particular need of an individual situation. This information and these opinions are subject to change without notice. Any type of investing involves risk including the loss of principal, and there are no guarantees. Our firm does not assume liability for any loss which may result from the reliance by any person upon any such information or these opinions in this webinar. So with that behind us and everything, what, what really is a market correction? Let's start off by defining what a market correction is. And uh, Technically, when you start looking at a market correction, there's several levels of a market correction that can happen. The first level is really a pullback, five to 9%. We actually have experienced one of these here, even in this year, we had a, uh, a pullback in January of this year, and then again, actually first part of February of this year, excuse me, and then again in uh, March of this year. Uh, so we did have some pullbacks in the market already. Uh, the next level of a, a uh, Correction is type uh, is called a correction. It's 10% to 19%. So if the market drops by 10% to 19%, that's an official correction by uh, definition. And then the final one is what's called a bear market, where the market drops 20% or more. And those are the ones that you really want to make sure that you're uh, try to stay out of the middle of, especially with your retirement assets when they come along and, and hopefully you're working with an advisory team that can help you navigate the waters of, of those types of uh, pullbacks and, and corrections to make sure that you're not um, in the middle of that. So let's put it a little bit into context. So if you think about the history of the market uh, over the last hundred and, well actually over the last uh, uh, 
many years from 1900 to 2017, we've had 125 market corrections. That's approximately one per year uh, that we've had over those those years. And those are just corrections in general. The We've had 32 bear markets during that period of time. That's a drop of 20% or more. So that's one about every three and a half years. Uh, when you start thinking about, again, the last market correction, bear market that we had, which was in 2000, in, beginning in 2008 through 2009, uh, and it ended in February 2009, you know, that's uh, over 10 years ago, or right at 10 years ago now. So we know that, that the market is on a high level. Uh, we get that question almost every week as to how high can this market go and what, what are we thinking about that? That's really one of the catalysts to have this seminar or work, web, webinar today is really just to make sure that you are prepared for that. Um, and that's, that's when the bear comes strolling across and you, you have to kind of be aware that that could happen almost at any time. And then understanding what actually triggers that market correction is where you can start looking at things and understanding if uh, you know whether you need to make any action or take any action or not. So one of the things that typically would start a correction of some type might be just profit selling, where the traders on the floor of the exchange feel like that they've made enough profit and they want to take some cash or chips off the table and and they want to um, you know put some of that in their pocket. So that that could start some kind of a, a pullback in the market. Corporate earnings are another thing. So maybe a uh, corporates, uh, different corporations are not meeting their earnings expectations. Um, Wall Street is very fickle and, and you, just when you think you got it figured out, that's when it kind of changes directions. Uh, there could be some kind of a technical analysis that, that, analysis that shows up that could start the uh, economy going in a, a sl slower direction. And uh, all of these things can trigger some fear uh, that could also be another uh, level of, uh, of trading or, or another reason for the market to start to pull back as just people start to, starting to get a little fearful of the high markets and things. And of course, you always have the things like the black swan events or things like 9-11 that so, suddenly happen and cause a sell-off in the market to, to one of these levels. I guess the biggest question that you should ask is how is this going to, how's it going to affect my investments or what's it going to do to my investments if we get in the middle of one of these uh, market corrections? And the first thing that you need to realize is that it is normal for the markets to reset themselves. Uh, the first thing that you need to try to do is to remain calm and don't panic. Uh, remember buying low and selling high is not the same as buying high and selling low. So you don't want to, uh, react to something that uh, that could just be over in a matter of a few days. Remember, long-term investing means staying in it for the long haul, not just over a few, few days and everything. And I guess the main thing is to remember this too shall pass. It can affect your investments. It is going to obviously drive them down to a lower value. Most people is in a, a lower uh, valuation uh, situation would end up buying more if they could, if, you, if, you, if it was a good enough position to buy into in the first place and there's no technical reason for it to go down, that may be an opportunity for you to start buying some other uh, positions in that. Let's take a look at this bull market that we're in for the last uh, eight years now, so 10 years into this bull market. Uh, if you look at it from um, the 2000, let me get my little pointer here. If you look at it all the way over here, if it started in January of 2009 and went all the way through January 2018 this year, we've enjoyed a 258% um, growth rate if you were lucky enough to get in at the very bottom of that, that curve. Now, most people didn't. Uh, you probably didn't get into that uh, at the very bottom. And, uh, but the, the goal is, is to again, have long-term investments, not the short-term mentality. Again, once you really think you have things figured out, you start looking at how things uh, changed just since the election. Uh, while many people expected that if Trump was elected, the market would drop. Heck, we even said that here in our office that we felt like the market would drop initially, then come back. Uh, you know, just when you think you got it figured out, it, it changes again and goes the other direction. So on a cumulative basis, the S&P 500, 
has grown uh, 27.9 percent since uh, November of 2016, since uh, the day after the election, uh, be beginning on inauguration day, January 20th of 17 through the end of 2017, it went up 20 percent. So the key is, is making sure you have a diversified portfolio, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. But having a, a portfolio that's going to react or benefit from all types of different changes in the market is the best way to, to set things up for you. So you say, okay, I'm, I get it, Alan, but I'm still kind of worried about what's going on in the market. And there's a little cartoon that kind of explains the thought pattern behind this. And, and I understand, I mean, you could literally insert any reason that you think the market could fall. You see it on the news every night of, of why the market should fall or change or whatever. Um, and I get that. If you're still worried about this, this is kind of, should help you kind of understand the psychology behind most investors as, to, as, as they are going through this. Um, let me give them a little pointer again here. So when you look over here at the bottom, this, this is actually the investor psychology cycle that they came up with this name after uh, 2008, that this is what most people tend to do when they're investing in the market. You have, uh, usually as the market starts on a, a rebound, you'll see some optimism. People start thinking about getting back into the market. You know, they, they continue talking to their friends. Their friends are all excited. They start getting a little excited about it. They uh, feel a little thrill of the market because somebody's talking about a stock that's going through the roof or whatever. And then about that time they get in, right about that thrill level, they start to they jump back in, dump everything back in the market everything hits a euphoric level for a little bit of time and then we hit a peak and the market starts coming down again. And then you start feeling a little desperate about the, the, the situation. You might start to panic a little bit, have some capitulations set in, despondent, and then you, about, you sell normally down here about despondency and then the market continues down for a little while. The problem that we had in 2008, a lot of people stayed down here, they got out at this level and they never got back in. So they missed that whole 258% rate of return over the last, you know, call it 18 years. And uh, that's, that's unfortunate because if you have a good solid plan and you've built your plan or built your investment strategy around a plan, then, um, you know, most of the time you can ride these things out. You're, you're not gonna, first of all, go all the way down in that valley, uh, hopefully. And um, if you got a good team that's advising you, you're, you're they're getting out in a certain level, so you're missing some of that trough. Bear markets happen and then they recover. So here's another slide that kind of shows you what that means is that if you look back through history, all the way back into the 40s, I mean, there's been times where the market has dropped, but it always recovers again. Uh, again, if you look at the um, you know, last downturn in 2007, we had this 53% drop and this chart only goes up to 2015, but up at the, to that point, it was up over 172%. So again, if you can ride these out, that's, that's great, especially for younger investors that are listening this morning and then tuning in, that is the, the way you actually make money in the market is just continue to invest through those downturns. You're buying low and, it's, and uh, even as it's going down this hill, you're continuing to buy through your paychecks, through your 401ks and your other investments. And then as you start to go up here, you get what they call a dollar cost averaging. You get a lower cost per share uh, buy-in at, at your investment level. So those are ideal for the people that are still in the accumulation phase. If you're in the retirement phase though, it's a little bit un unnerving to go down this hill. So that's why we try to work with our clients to make sure that we're gonna, you know, hopefully start to change your investment strategy as you start coming down this hill, that you don't make it all the way down to the bottom of the valley. And again, if you've got your income plan set up properly where you know your income's not being affected by this, that's a key point in uh, making sure that you can get through these types of uh, um, changes in the market. Ultimately, the bear does retreat, goes back into the, the cave and uh, you can continue on. Here's a kind of a um, chart that shows you how the average bear market does recover. And if you think about the, some of them, they've recovered as, in, as quickly as one month. I mean, we had some pretty steep declines. If you look back here again at, at the, you know, in the 1998 era, we lost 19%, but we recovered in one month. 
And then we had a, you know, another one month. There was a two month there in 1978, a few three months uh, recovery times. Of course, then we had the 2000 uh, downturn, 2000 to 2002, there was 31 months. And then in 2007 to 2009, that was 17 months. So it does take a little while to recover from those in some cases, but all in all, it, it hasn't been, you know, that long a time. So, and you, again, you may still be thinking, Alan, it's, it's still too high. So what do I do now? The main thing you under, to understand is timing the market doesn't work. You're not going to be able to time it to get out at the very bottom or very top and get out at the, or back in at the very bottom. So the timing just does not work. It's really more about being in the market than, um, you know, and what we call time in the market as opposed to timing the market. Uh, we've actually seen this as a, another um, thing that investors go through. It's called investor dyslexia. Uh, and as I mentioned before, a lot of people in 2008 uh, got out at this level and they ended up getting back in somewhere around this level. Uh, some people didn't get back in at all. And I think that that was because when, after we went through the 2000 and 2001 to two, uh, downturn. A, another one in 2008 really set people back and they just didn't want to have anything to do with the stock market. But another thing that you have to think about is low interest rates have caused us to um, some people to get in the market that probably shouldn't have ever got into the market either. One of the things that as you start to consider what I just said about time in the market as opposed to timing the market, um, if you look at the last um, well, since 1980 through 2015, if you were in the market the whole time in the S&P 500, that whole period of time and didn't get out, your average rate of return was 12.5%. However, if you just missed the top uh, 20 days, your 20 best days there, 20 biggest up days, your uh, return dropped to 7.2%. If you missed the top 40 days, it dropped to 3.7 percent. And if you were in, if you missed the top 50 days, then you your average rate of return over that period of time was 2.2 percent. So getting in and out of the market again cannot is not the best strategy. You want to make sure that you have a diversified portfolio that's going to hopefully ride that out and uh, make sure that you're using that strategy right there. It's time in the market, not timing the market uh, that works the best. Uh, overall, if you look at all of the, the, the different indices out there, if you were just in the stocks, you can see the type of return from 1926 that you had. I mean, there's just a, a massive amount of growth in history there that we can learn from uh, just by going uh, or, or having a steady investment philosophy that will uh, uh, hopefully help you grow your investments over time. Again, the longer that you hold on, the better the chances are. This is what I was talking about a minute ago, is that if you are, it, you know, what, what's happened, what we've seen is a kind of a, um, uh, something that's happened that most people has driven a lot of people in the market that probably shouldn't be, is these low interest rates. Over the last, call it, 10, 15 years, we've, we've been going down the hill on interest rates. So as interest rates decline, bond values go up, but we got to this level where interest rates were so low over the last five or six years that it, you know, you were not seeing much of a return at all on your CDs or your savings account investments. And a lot of people, especially the uh, uh, older generation that is looking for income off of those CDs or those types of investments, we're kind of pushed back in the stock market. Well, the problem with that is, is that when you start looking at the uh, short-term reality of the stock market and you start to see, if, if you're just in for a one year, your volatility is, is greatly increased by just being in the market one year or two years. That's why when we sit down with somebody and we start talking about investing, we, we ask them about their investment horizon, time horizon, how long they're gonna you know, keep it in the market. If somebody tells me that they can only keep it in for a couple of years, usually we're gonna ask you to keep that money in a safe place like a money market account uh, or something that, that is probably not gonna pay you a whole lot. 
But again, think about that that a value or the the benefit of that type of an account. It's a uh, interest bearing account. And yes, it's not a lot of interest, but it's liquid. You can use it. You you have it available to you at all times. So that's its job. It's it's actually doing its job just by sitting there, even though it's not making a lot of money. Uh, it's it's doing its job. So you have to determine on your um, personal plan how much do you put in there. Is it you know. $5,000, $10,000, $100,000, whatever makes you comfortable and allows you to sleep easy at night, that's what you keep in that emergency account, regardless of what the interest rates are, uh, are paying. And don't let an advisor talk you into putting those assets at risk if you're not comfortable doing that. Uh, the longer you go out on this scale, obviously the, the more or the less the volatility is, and that drops considerably if you can stay in there 10 years or longer. So. Uh, if you're not going to use the money, obviously you can uh, go ahead and invest it, and then you can pick up some good paying dividends or dividend stocks that are the paying decent dividends. Uh, and right now you're seeing or we're seeing dividends uh, four or five percent, fairly common out there uh, that you can pick up as long as you're going to hold on to them for a period of time. And the good news is is that most years the markets do go up. So if you look at our chart here that uh, 62 years out of the, um, you know, since 1937, we've had a, uh, an increase in the market. You know, some years are better than others. We've had 19 down years. Uh, so most of the time the market is going up in a favorable direction for us. So if you've got your income tied down, you know that you're gonna get your social security, your pension, your income annuities and whatever's generating those that income on a monthly basis that, that protects your lifestyle, then most of the time you can ride out these, uh, these market corrections and, and pullbacks uh, to, to make sure that you're uh, uh, staying in there. Again, one of the things that you wanna to try to avoid with any of your retirement assets is those bear markets where the market drops so deeply um, that you, you know, it may cause you to, to make a decision that you don't wanna make. You still, again, may be thinking that, okay, I still want to make a change in my investment strategy. So this is a, a what we call the investor chittle, skittle chart. Um, I'm just going to kind of play a role here for a minute just to kind of uh, um, help you understand how this looks. I mean, obviously, when you look at this chart, there's a lot of different colors there. If you look across that top line, you probably start to see some kind of a theme going on there uh, that... Uh, I'll wait for a second, let you catch up with me and see if you see that. Do you see the theme? No, you don't see a theme because there's not one. I mean, it just, it's, it's chaos up there, right? So let's assume that you uh, have owned gray. You like these colors here. and You've owned gray for a number of years and gray is really bad. I mean, everybody on uh, CNBC, um, the, all the pundits, uh, Jim Cramer, all these guys are telling you gray is bad and you need to get out of gray and you've owned it for years and you finally decide to get out of gray. Well, it's what happens when you usually get out of an investment, it pops back and starts having a, a better year. You can see it popping back up here. Get my pointer again, see it popping back up there. Then of course, what happens after that? In 2000, you know, the, your gray investment starts hitting the, the, the best of the world. You sold out when it was down here at the bottom because everybody told you it was no good anymore. And then of course it starts to get better. As soon as you buy back in in 2000, what happens to it? Well, it falls down the, the scale again, back over down to the, uh, almost towards the bottom in 2001. You sell out, then it pops back up to the top. You buy back in, then it pops down to the bottom. And you can literally follow the gray across the, the spectrum here as to how it moves. So if you're chasing returns, this is what could likely happen to you over time. And it's just a, a bad cycle to get into. However, if you, if you build yourself a diversified portfolio and you can see the black in the middle, that's a diversified portfolio. Yes, it's not gonna do the best in the good years, um, but it's not gonna do the worst in the bad years either. So even if you look at 2012 over here, when the, mark, the diversified portfolio was down at the bot, towards the bottom, it still earned a 12.9% rate of return. That's not bad if you have a diversified portfolio and you can live with that. I think that overall your average rate of return there was 7.27 in a diversified portfolio. 
that's what we're trying to uh, empower people to do is make sure that they have things that are going to grow in good times and bad times. You're not going to hit the ball out of the park, but you're typically going to have a decent rate of return. So you don't want to get caught up in chasing uh, the market. Here's the five things that you should do as a market correction starts to happen. Uh, first of all, be patient. Make sure that you don't overthink things, that you're looking at the, your overall plan, you're understanding exactly what your plan is supposed to do. Communication with your advisor is, is key, making sure you're talking to your advisory team. Um, uh, fight your instincts. Make sure that you don't uh, sell out at the wrong time. Uh, and again, stay diversified in that, that total plan. Uh, and again, work with your, your financial advisory team to reassess those situations, those needs, and what you're uh, ultimately trying to accomplish with your plan. Look, it's very normal to worry when the market starts to change. We would prefer that you let us do the worrying. If you're a client of Mercurial Wealth Advisors, that's what we're here for. We want you to uh, reach out and contact us and uh, set up a meeting to go back through your plan, make sure you understand it. If you're not a Mercurial Wealth Advisors client, go to your advisory team, make sure they, they respond to you. Demand communication, demand setting down with them, understanding exactly where you are, what your plan is, what their plan is for you and uh, be careful not to take the same old advice that everybody gave back in 2008 and through the, the downturn is just hang on. It's going to get better. Most of us, you know, felt like it wasn't going to get better. Uh, and it's really tough. If your portfolio is uh, set up like most of the people's we see right now, I'd say probably 90%, if not higher of the people that we uh, talk to nowadays that come in to go through our uh, retirement 360 game plan process they're taking much more risk than they know that they're taking. And it's all because we've been on this 10 year, well now actually 18 year run, uh, or actually take back 10 year run on the, on the stock market. And so you've kind of gotten away from it. You just know that the market's been doing real well and you wanted to get as much of it as you can. So you're probably taking more risk than you need. So we are here to help people. Uh, if you're interested in looking at our uh, process, we would love to sit down and talk with you. Uh, if you are concerned about where you are we, the, and you're not one of our clients, we can actually go through and, and, and show you kind of how your current portfolio will perform if something was to happen to the market, if the market were, were to start to turn. Um, and, you know, hopefully the, we can give you that information to, that will make you feel a little bit more easy or at ease uh, as things get, get better. Remember, this is not the way to do it, okay? You don't wanna sell out here and buy back in here. You wanna make sure that you're doing it just the opposite of that and uh, you know, building out a portfolio that works for your plan. So we do have a couple questions here. I wanted to take a couple minutes here and answer these. Um, so the first question that we have is, my wife and I are a few years from retirement I don't know where to start. What would you recommend? I guess the first thing is that you want to make sure that you're um, uh, setting down with a qualified advisory team, going through a process, understand exactly what your, your goals are in retirement. This is one of the things that we spend the most time on in our uh, first meetings is really understanding what you're trying to accomplish in retirement. Are you trying to accomplish a, uh, a lifestyle that is different than what you have now? Most people that, uh, retire tend to start spending a little bit more money, quite frankly, and in the first five to seven years of their retirement, uh, they'll end up spending uh, a little bit more and um, we have to build a plan for that. So our, our process here is to understand what those goals are and then come back and show you exactly what your current plan will do and then show you how we might be able to improve that. Uh, so my answer to you would be to go back and I'll type this in here in a second, but go back, to meet with your advisory team. If you don't have an advisory team, call us at, at Mercurial Wealth Advisors, the number there on the screen that you can call us and, uh, or go to our website, mercurialadvisors.com. And we'd be happy to sit down with you and go through our, our process with you. Uh, second question is I've moved most of my investments to bonds this year. Is that a good move? You know, the bond strategy is not something that we're, uh, following at this time, all investments have cycles and bond cycles right now are uh, in a trough. 
uh, as interest rates go down, uh, bond values go up. As interest rates go up, bond values go down. So if you moved everything to bonds in this last year, interest rates are on the bottom and they're going to go up. So the, the historic or the financial service industry has always said that bonds are the conservative investment. Now I understand why you've done this. What we're looking at is bond alternatives to, um, to protect your principal, but also still gain some value. Some of the bond alternatives might be, uh, you know, CDs are starting to gain some value. Again, you're starting to get a little bit higher interest rates. I mean, quite frankly, we've used fixed annuities and fixed index annuities for bond alternatives for many of our clients' portfolios to, um, protect that principal and make sure that they're not going to lose any value. But the good thing with those types of investments is they can make money as the market does start to recover or, or go, even if the market doesn't go down, it's going, they're going to continue to make money. So um, uh, one last question here and then we'll finish up. But um, how do I find the right financial advisor? Well, hopefully this has been helpful for you to understand what we're, what we do as a advisory team. You're looking for somebody that's going to, in my opinion, you're looking for somebody that's going to work with you on a fee basis so that they benefit if you benefit. Uh, and that, that is the, the right way to do it. You don't want to work for a tran or, or find a transactional type advisor at this stage of the game, because then there, there's no, they don't have any skin in the game is the way I look at it. Uh, another way of looking at that is find a fiduciary advisor, somebody that is working on your behalf, that is working for you. They're not, and um, you know, being paid by a large corporation to sell different types of investments. Uh, and then I think the bottom line is work with an advisor that has a planning background. Look, one of the things that we do in our retirement 360 game plan is we want to look at your your investments, that's how we get paid, obviously. And we want to make sure that you have a, the proper investment strategy. But not only that is you've got to, we've got to work with your tax advisor to understand how, when you take money out of these accounts, how you're going to be taxed. Most of the money that you probably have saved is retirement type assets. So you're going to probably take, pay taxes on those assets as you take them out. So we want to look at that. And is there a strategy to reduce taxes with the new tax uh, laws that Trump passed? Uh, there are some, uh, there's kind of a window of time here that we feel like you can uh, kind of make hay while the sun shines, so to speak, uh, and pay taxes or at a lower rate. You also have to, in our opinion, have to bring your, uh, a, the legal team in on this and make sure your will, your trust, your powers of attorney, all those documents are all up to date and in place the way you want them to be. If you did your will or your trust uh, two, three, five years ago, it's probably time to just dust it off bring it back up on the table and let's make sure it's still right. Uh, there's a lot of things that have changed in the uh, rules lately. Uh, the estate tax rules have changed completely since uh, Trump got in office. So all of this thing, all these things need to be kind of updated periodically. And uh, the way we do it here at our office is really just to, to that's what re builds that 360 game plan. We have everybody working from the same playbook at the same time for your benefit. And that's what we're trying to do here. And there are other advisory teams that do the same thing. So uh, a lot of it's going to break down to personality. Who do you like? Who do you trust? And uh, you know, hopefully those, this, this information that we're giving you today will give you an idea of how we work. And again, if you'd like to do something to, uh, uh, or like to go through that process, give us a call, the numbers on the screen, or check out our website at mercurialadvisors.com. So that's it. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We're going to be doing a lot more of these types of webinars in the future. And uh, hopefully this has again been beneficial and we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much.